Hey everybody, hope you guys had a wonderful holiday break and we got a really fun one in store for you today. Now, I like to speak on the idea that if you challenge yourself with different limitations, you can facilitate creativity in how you break out of those limitations because sometimes creativity can feel like kind of a tricky concept, but anything that you can do to actually guarantee creativity is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So the challenge that I'm giving myself today is that I have to make a beat using only this. I'm talking drums, bass, synths, whatever. <laughs> and it could get ugly. It could get really ugly. But we're gonna give it a shot. To generate some cool sounds, I thought we could use this, which is the Digitech RP50 that I found thrifting the other day and I thought it was it was such a good find. So let's see if we can make some cool sounds with this. Okay, so the first thing I kind of want to do is just get some nice guitar chords going. I don't really know where we're going to go with this, but I'm going to search through some of these sounds and see if I can get something that's kind of cool. <laughs> Ooh, that's kind of a nice little tone. Maybe something like this. Kind of smooth, you know, simple. So we use that as the main kind of guitar loop. Okay, so I just added a little compression and some EQ and most importantly, a little bit of delay on there so that um, we can make the sound just a little bit more interesting than it was. The next thing I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna start just messing around with some of the sounds on the guitar. Like I'm gonna try to make some drum sounds out of it. Like, <laughs> how about like a, and then maybe for the clap, we could just hit the strings or something. Like, what else can we do? Um, we might need something a little bit higher. Sometimes you can pluck like up by the headstock here. All right, so from all those sounds, here's kind of what I think we'll do. So for this one, it was the sound of me kind of hitting the guitar. So we'll use that as the basis for our kick. So if we just drag this onto our kick track here. So you can kind of hear the, an essence of a kick in there. Basically what I've done here is just lowered it down an octave. So from here to here, shortened the uh, envelope significantly, just turned it to one shot mode as I like to do for basically all of the percussion that I have anywhere. And then we're just gonna lower this low pass filter all the way down. If you guys haven't seen this plugin, it's called Cashmere Essentials Kick, which I think is free. Yeah, this is the free version. It's really a great way to um, start shaping different sounds more like you expect them to be for kicks. It sounds like it's more compressed and saturated. And then I added some EQ, just getting rid of some of that 1K sort of wonky sound and then bumping up some of the lows and also high pass filtering it. When you start with just like a basic simple sound like I recorded in with my guitar, there's the dynamic range is just simply too large. So I like to compress the bejesus out of it. And actually this is limited. And that way, once you hit the saturation, which is the next part, it's not driving the saturation too hard in the non-linear range too quickly, if that makes sense. And this kind of crazy EQ, I've just sort of tilted the balance even more. So controlling some of the upper mid range, so you can hear the difference with and without. And another thing that I, I really like to do when I'm making kicks from scratch is to add a, another compressor and have the attack be really, really slow. Um, and this is one of the great ways to use a slow attack compressor is to allow the transient of the kick to, to pass through so that you can get a little bit more punch, but control the transient how you want. So you get to control the amount of attack and the length of the, the attack rather for whatever kick you're working on. And last but not least, I've got one of my all time favorite plugins, uh, the C1SC by Waves. And it's basically just controlling 250 Hertz and below at a relatively high ratio, pretty slow-ish attack. Here you can hear it off and on. So it's just kind of controlling that low end, which I really like in kicks, but I, you know, I still want it to be there. I don't want to just cut out all the low end of the kick. Okay, so we've got our kick here. Let's start working on our snare. And the little sample I wanted to work with was this one here. 
So you can almost hear that it's got like a rim shoddy quality to it. And I want to accentuate that. I want to kind of cut out all the low stuff and then saturate it, you know, and control the transient a little bit and then make it um, sound a little bit more like an actual rim shot. All right, so I've got two copies of the sample running and they're each starting at a different point of the waveform. So this is the original one. Not much happening here. I just kind of shortened the envelope, kept it on one shot mode. And then for this other one that I mixed in there, let me solo this real quick. I started it slightly later in the waveform, lowered it by five semitones so that it's adding, you know, just a, a bit more girth to the sound kept it really, really short. And then what I did is I added another version of that same exact sample, except I use an even later part of the waveform, which is mostly noise with just a hair of the actual transient. And then when you put it all together, it's starting to sound a little bit more like an actual rim shot. Now, as for the effects, I've got some saturation going, which is my favorite thing in the whole world, as you guys know. And one thing with rim shots is I really like to accentuate the mid range of almost like the fundamental frequency of the rim shot to match with whatever it is that I'm working on, like whatever key it is that I'm working on. You hear that kind of sound? That's what I wanted to accentuate with this EQ. And then um, I've just got kind of a, it's called a color limiter. It just adds a little bit of saturation, actually a lot bit of saturation, <laughs> just a little color while it's controlling some of these peaks. So let's do the hat now. This is the sample, the original sample that I wanted to work with. And the reason I liked it is because it has like some tones in there and I like to have those in my hat because it gives it a little bit of character. It's not just noise. Kind of sounds just like a perk right now. But if we just drag this uh, starting point a over a bit, it's a little bit more noisy and a little bit less kind of tony. And then if we add a little high pass filter, Behind the tones, you can really start to hear the way that it sounds like an actual hi-hat. And then once we add a little bit of EQ here and just uh, control some of the highs and get rid of that actual tone, pretty hat-like. One other thing I wanted to experiment with too is when I did the muted strum, I thought it might be fun to try to make a clap out of that exact sound. So here, here's the original sample that I used. And everything sounds like it's grouped together pretty closely, but we're gonna um, try to find a way to separate all of those out into more of like a classic clap sound. Now here's where the magic comes in. If you add a grain delay to a sound like this, a noisy sound, you could start adding these pitched copies really close together with the source signal so it almost sounds like a clap. Okay, so check this out. Here's the original. And then when we add the grains in there that are pitched a little bit, it starts adding all these random pitched copies, which is awesome because every single time I trigger the sampler, it's gonna be a little bit different, exactly like it would be with like a group clap kind of thing. All right, so let's use these sounds and see if we can come up with a nice little groove to the uh, original guitar loop that we made. So we're just gonna keep the groove nice and simple. So the next thing I wanna do is maybe just make this section twice as long, and then we're gonna add a little bit of bass, but of course using our guitar, right? So before I actually got a real bass, some of you guys might know that I used my guitar for all my bass sounds and just pitched it down because it actually sounds really, really cool. One time I was recording with some people and um, I had been borrowing somebody's bass at the time, and when he heard what I did with the bass, he was like, oh man, I love how my bass sounds. And all I was thinking to myself, Actually, that was my guitar. <laughs> Here's kind of what the guitar sound sounds like, right? The second that you actually press shift tab and go down an octave while keeping the timing the same, obviously, it starts to sound a little bit like this. So it's not too bad, you know, when you start adding some compression and saturation in there, which of course we'll do. So I actually kind of came up with two bass parts here, but actually I want to use um, the more interesting one for the hook and then the more chill one for maybe like the verse or like a slower section, maybe the bridge. Thank you. 
Now to complement the guitar and the bass sound, I, I want to use like sort of a pad, but obviously we're limited to just using a guitar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a cool sound using this pedal, and then we're just going to create a tone that we can actually use and map out to the keyboard with a sampler, just like we always do. So I found like this distorted preset on that pedal, and uh, I just played out a C. And I'm gonna use the tail end, I think, to create kind of like this, uh, a pad sound. We're just gonna low pass filter and make it a nice smooth kind of like chill keys sound that we can add and layer behind what we've got already. See how it kind of just hangs there behind everything else and fits together nicely because it provides a nice contrast to uh, the other more transient-like elements that are going on in the beat right now. Now the last kind of thing I want to add into this beat is like some sort of melody or lead sound. And when I was scrolling through some of those presets, I found this really cool like octaved distorted sound, which I thought would be really cool to kind of layer together and make something soulful and R&B. I think it adds a lot to um, what could be the chorus in this beat. So I went through and just kind of built out everything and copied some sections and added some variations. But I also went through and added some kind of interesting textures by going through some of those presets, like this one in the pre when there's um, no drums going. We got like the Blink-182 like string scratching thing happening. I also added a, another kind of cool zooming element by just fading in the attack of the little guitar texture that I made. Now one kind of final thing that I'm proud of with this guitar thing is that I made this shaker sound and um, I want you guys to listen to the original. And that's me just scratching the strings with the pick. But then I essentially just high passed it, compressed it, added some grain delay and then took out a couple of the peaks which made it sound like this. And then all together, and this is kind of what the beat is sounding like. So there we go. What do you guys think about this one? How do you think it turned out? I really like it. I, it's kind of like a chill, like sort of upbeat R&B track. But man, the whole time I just kept thinking I could really go for like a nice keys sound, like a Rhodes or a piano or something. But you know, it's the nature of the beast, the nature of the beats. So what challenge should we take on next? I wanna hear your guys' toughest challenges. Bring it on. Let us know down in the comments below. And as always, happy music making. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.